Good evening all, and welcome. I'd like to give a huge thank you to all my amazing patrons. If any of you are interested in signing up to Patreon to receive some awesome rewards, here is an example of some of the stuff that you can get. And there are even cooler rewards if you're interested. Just check out the link in the description, and it really means a lot. But anyway, for now guys, it's time to get comfortable. Grab your flashlight, and let the darkness take control. This happened a good few years ago. I was in my early 20s, single and living by myself. Most of my family lived about a four hour drive away from me. I was working for a small call center that provided, amongst other things, phone service for a 24 hour plumbing company. So they needed someone on the line at all times. My shift ran from 8pm to whenever my boss showed up to pick up the line, which was usually 6am. I worked in a building that housed several businesses of the same sort, called centre work mostly, though we were the only one that had 24 hour service. Because of budget cuts, I was always the only operator on my floor. The only people in the building at night were myself and the security guard, who came by to do his rounds twice a night. Now, because the line had to be on 24 seven, I was never allowed to disconnect while I was there. I ran to and from the bathroom, ate meals sitting in front of the computer, and every once in a while sneaked a cigarette at the window within sight of the screen. Only the light above my computer was on, Everything else was turned off when everyone went away at 10pm. So I was left in half darkness beneath the spotlight. I desperately needed that job to support myself. So despite the awful conditions, I kept repeating that it wasn't so bad. Things were usually quiet after 10pm. I could use the extra hours on my paycheck and didn't even need a second job. I did a lot of reading and even consider going back to school because, if nothing else, the night shift would afford me plenty of time to study. So one night at around 2am or so, I got a call. I introduced myself as I always did. Hi, you're speaking to so and so. My name is Jill. How may I be of service to you? The guy on the other side repeated my name and hung up. Working phone services on the night shift you get used to a lot of weird stuff. So I shrugged it off and went back to my book. Then he called again and asked if he was speaking to Jill. I said yes, repeated the name of the company and asked how I may be of service. He hung up. The third time around he asks if this is Jill on the phone and I ask to whom I'm speaking. He hangs up again. The next time he calls he's breathing hard on the phone and tells me to talk to him and he's not gonna hurt me. I jot down his phone number and I start hanging up whenever his call pops up, which was for the better part of an hour. This went on for months. When he realized I was hanging up every single time I saw the number, he began calling from a restricted number, meaning I never knew if it was a legit call and ended up answering. All the time, this guy kept saying he wanted me to talk to him and that he's not going to hurt me. The one time I counted, I hung up on this guy over 200 times in one night. Every time he would call, I'd say the company name and as soon as I heard him, I would hung up. I complained to my boss and she did nothing. Instead, she laughed off the whole thing because this guy obviously didn't know where I was and he was only a voice on a line, and I was perfectly safe. Sometime into this, I started talking to co-workers, and here's where it started getting really creepy. He never called on my days off. When someone else would be covering my shift, indeed at one point, I'd change shifts with a co-worker to attend a wedding, and he didn't call that day. As time went by, I was getting pretty spooked by the whole situation and the fact my boss did zero to try and stop this. 
my co-workers were sympathetic, and told me that if my boss did nothing, I should file a complaint myself. But I'm not sure I could, since this wasn't happening on my personal number. None of them could really walk me home, since I was the only operator in the night shift, and everyone else was gone by the time my boss arrived and I left the office. I got a little paranoid, because obviously this guy knew my schedule pretty well, and even if I changed shifts. He would only call if he knew I was on the line. It had to be someone who could see me. I started commuting, with my cell phone in hand at all times, with the emergency number dialed in. Sometimes I did the whole commute on the phone with friends or relatives, to keep calm. Since it's illegal to carry pepper spray here, at one point I considered walking around with a box cutter in my purse. That's how afraid I was. One day before my shift started, I was at the entrance of the building smoking a cigarette before going up and I see the security guard come by, the same fellow who usually did the night shift. This huge guy. I didn't really know him, I never spoke to him, I only said good morning or goodbye when I went by his desk, and whenever he came to my floor to do his rounds. I usually kept to myself, and never really made small talk or anything, I just greeted him out of politeness. He greeted me back. He asked me for a light, and I gave him my lighter, and he told me he had been fired, and he was going home. And he went on to tell me he always got the impression I was afraid of him, since I was never friendly or welcoming, and those were his exact words. He then told me he was never going to hurt me, and just walked away. I lost every drop of blood I had in me. I went inside to tell my boss the whole thing, and discovered the guy got fired for harassing women in other floors, going as far as to trying to corner someone in one of the elevators. The complaints piled up, and he lost his job. Most of the time his shifts matched mine, so he would see me come in at 8pm and left before I did. I asked my boss for that phone number again, to come forward on this guy and I asked the security company if it was his number. She told me she threw it away. When I told her the whole story, she found it quite… cute, that's the exact word she used. Then she asked me if I was sure it was him, because a voice on the phone is different, and that perhaps I got it wrong. Those were her exact words again. Quality Assurance told us, and again, that our every call was recorded, so I demanded recordings. That's when I found out that, again because of budget cuts and whatnot, the night shift was never recorded, so I had no evidence. Once the guy was fired, the call stopped. I didn't work there for much longer after that. I am a 20 year old female, doing my first semester of college. I was working at a well-known grocery store that rhymes with hogger. I had really late hours to match my school schedule, and mostly worked 5pm to 1am. I actually really enjoy night shifts, as the overnight team of mostly guys were very sweet and protective. One night, two men came in about 30 minutes apart from each other, right before closing. They both gave me really weird compliments about my hair, skin, and body, and were just generally creepy. It's not uncommon. And I didn't think much of it, just a smile and wave. We close at 1am, and it normally takes me a few minutes to close up. I grab my things, call an Uber, and wait in the lobby right inside the locked doors playing on my phone. Until I hear an intense knocking on the window. These two men are standing right in front of me, waving their arms and begging me to come outside. Not knowing what to do, but not about to be dumbass and get taken, I tell them one sec, and run back inside and tell the overnight guys what's happening. They're furious, and they're all quite intimidating, so I walk back to the lobby with them to get my Uber, 
and these guys outside glare at me before running away. What losers, waiting outside my job at 1.30am. But still, let's not meet again. This happened when I was about 16 or 17 years old, back when I lived with my parents before I moved out to college, where I live happily now. I used to live outside the city, and had a part-time job at a big retail store downtown. In order to get there, I had to take a bus, which was about a 30 minute ride. I mostly worked night shifts, as I still went to school and could work from around 5pm to midnight, closing up the store and taking the very last bus back home. Like every night, after my shift, I would wait for the bus at the bus stop. This skinny Caucasian guy, 5 foot 9, around 30 years old, with thick framed glasses and a buzz cut, stood next to me, and he kept rubbing his hands mentioning how cold it was. I nodded and smiled politely, not thinking too much of it. He kept repeating how the weather was changing, and after a while I stopped responding to it figuring he was just talking to himself. The bus arrived and I got on. Taking a seat in the back, he took a seat just one row behind mine. During the first 10 minutes of the ride, he didn't really say anything. You know how it can be dark outside and the windows reflect and function as mirrors? He kept turning his head to the side, watching me through the reflection in the window. I thought it was kind of odd, but still didn't think too much of it. He got off one stop before me, and I went home and forgot all about it. A few weeks later, I worked another shift, and as usual, I waited for the bus at the bus stop. I got on the bus, and to my surprise, this dude was on the bus again, sitting in the exact same seat. I recognised him because he looked particular, his posture was off, and the glasses stood out. As this was a Friday night, the bus was very full, and I had no choice but to sit one row behind him. He tapped me on the shoulder. Hey, you take the 11.48pm bus often? I think I've seen you before. I nodded. I work nearby. We had this small talk conversation where I told him some small details about my life and who I was. That was a mistake. This is where things started to get really weird. Over the next few weeks, he would be waiting at the very bus stop every single shift I worked, or be on that very bus. He could have had a very similar job at a similar time schedule, but what truly weirded me out, was that he kept trying to talk to me. How was work? I told him it was fine, and tried to sound a bit rude in order to make him back off. You're quite a looker, he said. Do you have a girlfriend? Boyfriend, perhaps? I told him it was none of his business, and that I would prefer to be left alone. He was a stranger, after all. He seemed insulted and didn't speak to me for the rest of the ride. I didn't see him for a month, until he showed up at my workplace. He walked up to me and smiled, waved sort of childlike, and he asked me where he can find a certain product, and I tell him where it is. After my shift, I wait for my bus, and get on. Edward, I hear behind me. How was work? How was work? It must have been quite busy during the holidays. I turn around and see the guy again. I'm sorry, how do you know my name? Your name tag, silly. This is where he starts to ask me all sorts of questions about my school, parents, which bus stop I get off at. I ignored him and got off my stop. Well, Edward, I'll see you next week. He said with his childlike grin. I got really freaked out by this guy at this point, and told my girlfriend about him. She thought it was just a harmless gay crush he had on me, 
but I explained to her that this guy was making me feel very uncomfortable. He knew all sorts of personal information about me, and seemed to have nothing better to do than to take the same bus ride every single night. She figured she could pick me up from work instead, but I declined, as I was not going to let some stranger influence my life decisions and routines. Whenever I would get out of work, he would wait for me. It just seemed like he would. I told him to get lost after a few months. I graduated high school and quit my job to move to college. I still occasionally take that bus when I visit my parents, but I have only seen this guy once while doing so. He waved at me as if he had run into his old pal, and I ignored him. It might not be that scary to any of you, but this guy still freaks me out to this date. I used to work at a hospital for the mentally ill. Although it was a hospital, it didn't look like a regular one. It was more homely, but it still contained tough security systems, so patients couldn't go into any rooms without an electronic key. Only their bedrooms were accessible to them. Anyway, we had one patient in particular who would always shout randomly at the air and argue with it. We knew she hallucinated a lot, and would jokingly ask her who she was talking to. She would always say that she was arguing with a couple, male and female, who lived upstairs. The only rooms upstairs were the staff room and some offices. One night, I was doing the night shift. It was late, and I was cleaning the lounge when I noticed a shadowy figure move in the reflection. I wasn't scared though, as I just thought it must have been another staff member, or even one of the patients who would come out of their bedroom. I immediately peeked down the long corridor, but it was completely empty. I thought I must have been tired, and just imagined it, so I ignored it. Later that night, I was trying to have a quick nap, and I sat with the TV in front of me off, and I saw the shadowy figure walk by through the TV reflection. But this time I heard my name being whispered. I thought it was a staff member who had caught me trying to have a quick nap, but lo and behold the corridor was empty. I didn't bother telling anyone, as I felt they would clearly not believe my story. A few days later, during a day shift, a bunch of us staff members were talking about the patient that hallucinates, when one of the staff members spoke about an experience he had on the night shift. He described seeing a shadowy figure through the reflection of a glass door. The others laughed at him, but I told him that I had experienced it as well. We were both creeped out, as we knew that we clearly hadn't imagined it. Plus, this patient's story became more intriguing, after another patient started complaining of a mysterious woman who she would see walking up and down at night, and claimed to have lived upstairs. I worked at Waffle House on the night shift, for almost two years, and this guy came in one night, when they had me at a different store location than usual. He sat in my section, so of course I set him up, and tried to be friendly. He immediately began telling me that I was really hot. I was uncomfortable, but I had been spoken to more inappropriately before, so I just kind of brushed it off. He ordered his food and everything was fine for the most part, until the end of his meal. He went back to telling me that I was gorgeous. He asked me for my number, but I told him, no thanks, and that did not go well with him. He started to really bug me, so I walked away and told another server to take care of him for the rest of the time. I even let them keep the tip. He was offended that I wouldn't come and speak to him, and when he got up to pay for his meal, he walked back up to me and started asking for my number more aggressively. I tried to walk away, but he kept following. One of the cooks spoke up, and told him he'd have to leave if he kept it up. 
He lost it after that. Began cursing and talking about how he could take really good care of me. Talking about how great his thing was. At this point, I just walked to the back part of the store and stayed there until he left. One of the other servers apologised and said that he was actually a regular and they think that he's a pimp from across the street at this shady motel. A few hours had passed and I stepped out back to smoke. A few minutes later, he came walking around the back of the building approaching me again. I immediately went back in and closed the door before he had a chance to say a word. He was literally just sitting in the parking lot waiting for me. I had to have a cook walk me to my car when my shift ended. Since that day, I have refused to work at that location ever again. This happened very recently. I work night shift. I don't drive, but I live 15 minutes away from my place of work. I live next to a cemetery. Around here, they don't put lights or many power poles in cemeteries, so there are no street lights on most of my walk. The night was extremely quiet. All the town's shops were closed. There were no bars around, so the streets were deserted. I shared my phone location with my boyfriend and my best friend when I began walking, because I had a bad feeling. The darkness was cut by a few porch lights as I walked. My footsteps sounded like they were echoing. There were slightly offbeat sounds between my steps. I stopped and looked back quickly, but no one was there. I continued to walk and the sound started again. I looked back and it stopped. The lights from a porch illuminated a pair of feet behind a car on the street. I was three houses down from mine. I booked it. I never knew my tiny legs could run so fast. The steps were behind me. I threw my door open so fast, it hit my wall and I slammed it, locking both locks and flipping off all my lights and putting a chair underneath my doorknob. It didn't seem like anyone was behind me anymore, but this person knew where I lived. I sat on my floor quietly, crying, holding my hamster in my lap for a minute as I tried to calm myself. My home is a separate garage apartment outside a house. It's very quiet usually, and the only noise really being my hamster, and my hamster is asleep by 5am. I heard rustling around my house all night. At 5.30am, I heard a knock on my door. No voices or anything just knocks and shuffling, and more rustling. My boyfriend came by to check on me that morning, and my doormat was moved, but nothing else was too amiss. I didn't call the police, but there's good reason. The police are shared with multiple cities, so they don't usually come or show up late, just to not really assist. I wanted to go to bed and stay quiet. To the guy who followed me home, Let's not meet again. I work the night shift at a hotel, so I've had tons of weirdos come through, but this is the most recent. Everything started off normally. Usually once I click in at 11pm, I can just sit at the desk and only see a few people. I'm a loner, and I prefer it this way. At 2.30 in the morning, a guy in his 30s comes down and stands in front of me at the desk. I've worked this job for five years, so I can pick out the weirdos pretty well, and I knew right away something was off about him. He didn't say anything at first, just stared at me, so I asked, Can I help you? He mumbles something. All that I can make out is the word coffee. I tell him that there's fresh coffee available in the breakfast area behind him. He turns, then looks back at me confused. Do you have some coffee I can take to my room? My first thought is that this guy is drunk as hell. And I told him he could take a cup of the already made coffee, 
or I could give him a few packs to take. He wanted the packs, so I grabbed a few and handed them to him, hoping that that's all he wanted and I could resume watching TV. No such luck. He kept standing in front of me, looking at the packets of coffee, confused. I'd had enough of drunk guy, so I walk over to the other side of the desk and stare at the TV, ignoring him. After a few minutes, he wandered into the breakfast area and stares at the pots of coffee. Then he wanders over to the fruit, the cereal, yogurt, and back. He's just staring at everything and walking in slow circles. After a while of that, he stops looking at the food and looks at the ground, then starts muttering to himself as he walks in circles. Now he is officially freaking me out. He's at least six inches taller than me and 50 pounds heavier, and I'm the only one on shift. I start thinking of escape options, like locking myself in the laundry room, running to the gas station next door, as I've had to do it a few times where things have gotten really bad. So I try to plan ahead when people give me bad vibes. About 15 minutes after, he starts walking in circles and he heads down the hall, still muttering. I relax, happy he's gone to bed to pass out, and I'll have the lobby to myself again. Probably five minutes later, I glance out the front doors and he's right there staring at me, smoking a cigarette, and talking to himself. I'm starting to think he's high, and that scares me enough to grab a pair of scissors when he's not looking and hold them by my side. I begin contemplating calling the police, but what for? He hasn't done anything yet. So I wait it out, in the hopes that he goes to bed soon, since it was after 3 a.m. For the next half hour, he walks up and down the hall, through the lobby, and outside, then comes back in through the back door and loops around again. The third time he walks by me, still talking, I was terrified, and was on the verge of saying, screw it, I'm calling 911 anyway just to have someone else there with me. Just then an old woman walks up to the desk and asks me to call her a cab. She has no idea how happy I am to see her. I call for her and start chatting her up, which is very unusual for me, just to keep her in the lobby. The weirdo comes around the corner for the fourth time and the old woman tells him to pack his stuff. They're leaving because he woke her up and she couldn't go back to sleep. Apparently this old lady is the weird guy's mum and I feel much better knowing he was going to leave as soon as the cab got there. As soon as she told him to pack his stuff, he got angry. He didn't want to leave. He told her to go back to bed, but she was adamant and after they argued for a bit, which was awkward for me just sitting there watching, he goes upstairs to pack. She explained to me that she could tell he was getting agitated and that it was time to take him home. I spoke to her for a while and she opened up to me that her son is schizophrenic and she's the only one who can take care of him. She told me she just wished someone would take him for just six months, like a hospital, to get him on meds and into a good routine. I felt so awful for her. She seemed so tired and hopeless. I have mental issues myself, so I could relate to the struggle. All of a sudden the weird guy comes running out demanding to stay, and they argue again. Except this time he sees me watching and focuses on me, storming up to the desk and screaming. She's gonna call the cops, I didn't do anything. Loads of horrible things followed. I just stood there stunned. I held the scissors up to defend myself and his mum screamed, stop, do you hear what you're saying to her? And he calmed down just as fast as he snapped. The cab pulled up and as much as I felt for his mum, I was happy to see them pull away. I'd rather not meet him ever again. I'm a 23 year old female. But at the time I was working, I was turning 19. And for reference, this all takes place at my local gas station. I have a fairly young face and I'm very short, 
to the point that I had to climb onto the checkout counter to stock cigarettes. It was not fun, and the customers loved to watch. So I've had many experiences, but this one takes the cake. There was this local dealer that came in a few times a night to get soda and food. The gas station I worked at specialised in fried chicken, and he always had a special order made by the cook, who I was good friends with. The dealer was called Baba. Most of my co-workers brought from him often, so oftentimes they would go behind the place to buy from him. I worked 4pm to midnight, and on my first night he came. He took a shine to me and began to flirt. Many people have taken my kindness as flirting. He was one of these people, and it got creepy pretty soon. He kept saying how he and I would have dates, and he'd tell me about this yellow dress he bought for me to wear on the date. One night, on my way out of clocking out, he approached me, which caught me off guard, and he kissed me on the cheek and then walked away laughing, leaving me standing there shocked and feeling violated. It freaked me out, but not enough for me to stop coming to work because I really enjoyed my job. Now, whenever I took breaks, I took them at this dark area next to the store that had a makeshift bench on it. It was quiet, and I liked it. Turns out one night when I didn't take my break because it got so busy, he was waiting for me there. Now one night he calls the store asking my supervisor to speak to me. She knew this guy was a creep and told him that I wasn't working. She hung up on him after a few moments and later told me what he said afterwards. Apparently he sounded very drunk and said, I could see her in the window. She isn't working. Put her on the damn phone. He was very angry for some reason, and she made sure to keep an eye out for him that night. Fast forward two days. I'm working my usual shift and it's around midnight. Our policy is that we have to close the store in order for it to roll into a new business day. A car pulls up in front of the store, and from where I was stationed, I could see outside the store into the parking lot. It was Bubba sitting in his car staring at me, with a very angry look on his face. He didn't exit the vehicle, he just sat there staring. He seemed to be playing with something whilst staring at me. Now in walks my friend, who was surprising me by picking me up that night. My one male friend who is super tall said they walked past his car and happened to look over. Abba was playing with a big knife and there was duct tape and rope sitting in the front seat. After that, I noped out of there and quit that job. We see him once in a while around town, but I'm always with friends. I'm just lucky he never learned my first name, and that I didn't walk home that night like I usually do. It was a pretty freaky experience that shattered my innocent view of the world. The first thing happened when I was 18. My 14 year old sister and I walked into the kitchen after ballet class. We were home alone and talking about what to make for dinner. All of a sudden, we hear a little girl laughing. It sounded like it was coming from just out of sight in the hallway upstairs. We both stopped mid conversation and stared at the hallway. My sister, still staring at the hallway said, did you hear the laugh? I said yes, and she jumped into action, grabbing a large knife from the drawer. I rolled my eyes, but grabbed one as well and followed her upstairs. There was no one up there, no TVs were on, and no windows were open. We've had no other experiences in our house to date. This is now the second story. A few years ago, I used to work at a rehab centre. I did the graveyard shift and had to go do three bed checks per hour to make sure all the patients were in bed. This was a really cool rehab programme, where the kids lived with the parents while they were there, and these people worked on getting clean and being a better parent. The only thing I hated about the job 
was that the houses they lived in were super old and really creepy. And I had to navigate my way through with just a flashlight. As a result, I left many lights that wouldn't disturb anyone on and spent more time than I should have in the well lit office. One of my last nights there, I was in the office with my feet up on the desk. The light from the living room lit up on the wall in front of the office. And just then I heard what sounded like children playing in the next room. As the sound moves closer to the office, I can see what looks like the shadow of a little girl in a dress being cast on the wall from the light of the living room. I can hear her humming and talking to herself. When kids are out of bed, I was supposed to take them back to their parents, wake the parents up and make them put them into bed. I heaved my feet on the desk and they made a loud slap as they hit the floor. I saw the shadow freeze and then scurry away. Now it took me probably five seconds to cross the office and get to the living room. And by the time I got there, it was empty. None of the toys had been disturbed. The only place this little girl could have gone from there was over a baby gate, down a short hall, and then down along a creaky flight of stairs. I quickly ran to the stairs and looked down. For good measure, I went and checked on all the kids in the house, and they were out. The next morning, one of the dads told me about the creepy paranormal stuff he'd seen in the house, and that I was lucky to have not seen one of those. I was glad I only had two night shifts left after that night. This third story actually happened this year, the day before Halloween. I had a friend in from out of town, and we decided to take him on a ghost tour in downtown Salt Lake City. I had been on another tour by the same company, and it had been educational and scary. They hand out dowsing rods and EMF detectors, load everyone up on a bus and take you around to various alleged haunted locations and tell you about the activity claims. In the middle of the downtown tour we took our friends on, we went to the Holiday Inn Express. Yes, our tour guide made the joke about the not creepy name as well. In the 70s, the wife of a cult leader after her husband's death took her seven children up to a balcony and encouraged them to jump. The ones who did not want to jump were thrown off. She jumped after they all fell. One girl survived, and I believe that she's still alive today. For the tour, we stood on the sidewalk where the children landed and looked up at the balcony. Now I get dizzy upon standing quite frequently, and we had been on and off the bus for a good five minutes before. And then I had this experience, standing there looking up. My heart broke for those children. All of a sudden I got the most extreme sense of vertigo and my heart started pounding. I was terrified. I have never been that dizzy in my life. I almost had to sit on the sidewalk. For just a moment, I felt like I was falling. I could feel the wind on my face, just as I was about to sit down. And then it abruptly ended and I felt completely fine. The tour guide started leading us back to the bus. My boyfriend had been standing in the road behind me during this whole thing, and he said that EMF had all of a sudden started going crazy, and then it stopped. I didn't see it, but his description seemed to coincide with my experience. It did not feel like I was attacked by a malicious spirit. It felt like I connected with the spirit of a sweet scared, little girl. I was at Huntington Beach doing a celebration banquet for the school's band. And as the night was coming to a close, some band kids noticed that some people were circulating a bonfire. Me and my buddy were going to try and join them because we thought they were joking. But then someone about 10 to 20 feet away began to start hitting a bell and everyone that was circulating the bonfire started walking towards it. Just wait, it gets creepier. We suddenly notice that there are candles in the sand, about 10 to 15. 
People get in a circle and some of them start to remove their clothing. At this point, I really had to take a leak. So I'm walking to the bathroom at the beach and in the distance, I can hear all of the people potentially doing a ritual start screaming out loud. This was creeping me out. I go back to where the band group was and everyone was packing up everything. It was around 9.30 or 10, almost beach closing time. And as I return, some people in the candle circle are walking on all fours, while some people are standing and doing a tea pose. While they're saying some things that are simply indecipherable to me. And then they proceed to all strip to their underwear and run into the ocean. Hey guys, it's Mort here and thank you so very, very much for listening. I do hope you enjoyed tonight's installment of Night Shift Stories. Haven't done them in a while and I really, really wanted to. Huge thank you to all my amazing patrons. Your support really does mean the world to me. If you'd like to have your name shown on screen and support the channel and get awesome rewards, check out the link in the description. It means a lot, but of course is entirely optional. Thanks guys. If there's a story that you would like to share, send it to my email, post it to my Reddit, and be sure to fill it with good description, paragraphing, punctuation, all the good stuff, as that maximizes the chance of your story being read in a future installment. But yeah, thanks guys. Right now, I think I'm watching it too. If the upload goes to plan, so hopefully it's amazing and I'll be able to tell you about it. Maybe. But anyway, for now, guys, I'm going to sign off. Stay awesome, and I'll see you in the next one.